decades before Facebook, Hi, Tom. social communities revolved. How you doing, Jim? Around red, white, and blue poles. Thank you, Don. Well, this is this is so. uh, the information <laughs> center. She gets sick for about three days, but not not extremely bad. In Fremont, where the population is just a hair over 700. Depends who's <laughs> died in the last week. <laughs> One man. You still cut hair? <laughs> Sit down. Is an $8 institution. When I moved down here, it was a dollar. Six generations of Mahaska County men have remained faithful to Bill the barber. It really turns them on when I stick my finger in their ear. <laughs> Main Street love affair that started 49 years ago. When I opened up that day, I thought, what have I done? It was like an hour before I had a customer. Before long, the town would go bushy anytime Bill took a vacation or, heaven forbid, he had heart surgery. Nobody wanted to get their hair cut. We all looked like we're crap for, you know, for two months till we came back and cut our hair again. Triggering a run on the barber. And the most haircuts I've ever given in one day was 82. And I thought I was going to decease. It was, it was terrible. Bill is uh, is kind of the heart of Fremont. I, I love it and I the, just getting up and coming to work is a joy. Mm -hmm. Got it. Oh my gosh, oh, Huey no. baby. So imagine their horror your last day anyway. tomorrow when his faithful men got the news. And you thought Rod how to cut nose hair. Yep, we will. And ear hair. Oh yeah. But after per near half a century, Bill's clippers aren't quite done yet. My wife's lost her hair from chemo. Within weeks, the wards are heading south. My son Brian and I are going to shave our heads before we go to Mexico so she won't be the only bald one on the trip. Leaving his faithful men in good hands. Appreciate all your business. It's been fun. To celebrate life with his sweetheart. Yeah, Jim, thank you. Barbershop. To a four-year-old. Four and a half. Okay, four and a half-year-old. There's independence and speed. Because you can go fast all. In two wheels. Just within the last month, he's taken his training wheels off, so he's been riding a lot. And the cul-de-sac rule? A helmet every time. So you don't fall off and bonk your head. But this is helmet number two. The first? It broke. How'd it break? When the truck ran over me. It happened Saturday in a neighbor's driveway. As I turn around, I see a truck with no one that I can see driving, rolling back over, looked like about to roll over three boys. Including Eli. And I was screaming, stop, stop. I saw the, the tire go up over his bike and saw him under the truck as well. This ran over my helmet and, uh, <laughs> and me. There was a two-year-old inside that had must must have somehow put it into gear. It was scary. The chin strap was still around his neck with a piece of helmet on it. Shattered in so many pieces. Six, seven, eight. Police are convinced the tire crushed it. We definitely feel like the helmet saved his life. For it to shatter like that, something had to have hit it, whether it was the wheel or something. And if it wouldn't have hit his helmet, it would have hit his head. And that could have been possibly fatal. Eli has owies. Right here on this spot. Plenty of them. On my forehead and some on my face and. But after a little bike repair. Kind of got old, but my navel fixed it. And a hospital overnight. Sure, yeah. Eli came home, clipped on his backup. You have to put a helmet on. You do? Why? Because so you don't fall off and hit your head. And triggered tears of thankfulness. I totally think it's a miracle and it was God's protection over both him and our neighbors. Doctors have nurses, like Santa has elves. All Jeff Spencer has is a letter opener. Yeah, I'm sure by now I'd have all kinds of cuts if I didn't. And a quiet zone to process piles of bittersweet Christmas cheer. She kind of declining every day. When word started spreading that his mom's brain tumor would most likely win before her favorite holiday arrived. This one's all the way from Pennsylvania. Friends and strangers decided. This is actually from uh, St. Anthony School in the morning. Christmas can't wait. The last official count was 1,501, but that was yesterday. Before Mary Sellers pulled up Thursday. All kinds of good stuff. And dropped off another armful. <laughs> well, I, I knew there was something going on because usually I just have a handful, and all of a sudden I kept getting more, and I thought, well, there must be somebody pretty important staying here. Pennsylvania, Nebraska. 
Indiana. Alaska. Carol Spencer's now surrounded by so much love in her final room. I think if we put them all up now, they would, they would overwhelm the walls to begin with. Her family's moved on to a massive book that'll be displayed at her funeral any day now. And this one's from Alaska. A mail carrier can tell you the power of a card. Oh, lift your spirits. But watch a son read a stranger's note and you can feel it. I've walked in your shoes and I know that it, what it is like. It's great to know that so many people have you and their thoughts and prayers. God bless you. Merry Christmas. Hugs and prayers are coming your way.